Hi, this is Gary Rubenstein, and today I want to show you how you could easily incorporate uh, the history of math into a very standard uh, question from geometry. And the question looks like this. Uh, this is a pretty popular question in, uh, in geometry, where you have this pair of overlapping triangles. And the given information usually tells you something like that HA is is congruent to uh, DA and also somehow we know that FA this larger side is congruent to CA and it is tricky to to see this this picture sometimes for for students um, but we have a triangle here it's pointing in this direction and HA is sort of the short side of that and uh, CA is the long side, and those correspond with, uh, with DA and, uh, and, and FA in the other triangle. And you have this shared angle in the middle. And that makes these two triangles congruent, and then because they're congruent, the other three pieces of them are congruent. Um, most importantly for the proof that we're uh, about to do, that it's also true that angle FDA is congruent uh, to angle CHA. Now that question does not seem like a terribly important question, uh, but it actually is involved in a very important construction that I'm going to show you about. And the construction comes from Euclid's Elements. Now Euclid's Elements was written in 300 BC and uh, aside from the Bible, it is actually the most published book in the history of mankind. Um, speaking of the Bible, everyone's familiar with uh, the famous passage, John 3.16, held up at uh, football games around the country. Well, today's proof is based on Euclid 3.16 and Euclid 3.17. Now, Euclid 3.17, Book 3, Proposition 16, sorry, is when he proves that a um, a tangent to a circle from a point on the circle will be perpendicular to the radius at that point. And he's going to use this in Book 3, Proposition 17. I'm going to show you how, how he does that. In Book 3, Proposition 17, Euclid is going to show us how to do uh, a construction where you're given a circle with sensor A and you're given a point, in this case point C, not on the circle, and the object is going to be to create one of the two lines which is tangent to the circle but goes through the given point C. So we're trying, our goal is to create this line over here. This turns out to be a pretty difficult problem. Like in coordinate geometry, if I had the coordinates of the, uh, the equation of the circle and the coordinates of this point, it would be pretty hard to um, calculate out the equation of this circle. But construct uh, of the line that is but constructing the line ends up being pretty easy and has a very clever idea in it and here's the way it works uh, the first thing that you do is you create line segment AC where line segment AC intersects the, um, the circle we could label that point that's point D and using book 3 proposition 16 if we create a, uh, if we construct a perpendicular line, we will have a line that's tangent to the circle at point D. Now we are going to create a second circle. This circle has center A and goes out through point C. This point over here, I'm going to identify, and that's point F. Now I'm going to connect F to A and call the intersection of FA with the original circle H and finally I'm going to construct line HC and Euclid claims now that HC is the line that we were trying to create uh, that it is perpendicular or it is a tangent to the circle and it does go through point C. Now if you look carefully you can actually see this picture that we had from before. 
So as you can see, we have that same triangle as before. Uh, we have two triangles, A, C, H, and A, F, D. Now, A, D is congruent to A, H because those are both radii of circle, the small circle, A. Whereas A, C and A, F are congruent because those are uh, both radii of the bigger circle, the one that center A and goes through point C. And angle F, A, C is shared by both triangles. So uh, triangle FAD is congruent to triangle CHA. And by corresponding parts of congruent triangles, we also know that angle FDA is congruent to angle AHC. But FDA is a right angle. It is because it was we, we created it to be a right angle so that FD would be tangent to the smaller circle. Well, that means AHC is a right angle. And if AHC is a right angle, then HC is tangent. And that's what we're trying to prove. So this is a nice example of how this, uh, this problem that we see all throughout, uh, all throughout geometry, we see um, in geometry textbooks, we see this question. But it's never put into any sort of context, and it never really seems to be very important. But as you can see, this... Uh, this diagram comes up in a really important proof that really should be taught more, I, I think. So that's a good example of how you can incorporate um, the historical context of a problem. And I think students will find this question a bit more interesting when it's being used to prove that this construction works instead of just um, a context-free question that just says prove that these random two triangles are congruent to each other. So I hope you like that, and I encourage you to find different ways to locate historical context for problems from geometry textbooks.